All right. So after previously implementing uh, some more IAM GUI elements to view like the, the list of resources, although like you can't select them to see the details quite yet, and the same thing for the entity list, I noticed something peculiar that the camera is sitting on 0x01, even though like it's supposed to be like the data group which has just the render mesh. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, 03, and then the camera is supposed to be under E01, like under the persistent group here. And that'll be named that. So the question is like, how is this? And, and where the hell did L2 come from? I'm pretty sure I got something broken where like, I have these, but I don't actually have data indices for these. So I gotta kinda fix this up now. Um, so first of all, I'm pretty sure recycled indices, I can probably just do this. So I only have three, so I can read recycle like one and recycle two and three is an actual one. So if I do that, that should cut it down. Right then and there, three and E01. <gasps> okay. So the issue was, oh, that's simple. The issue will be rather on the state import somewhere in here. We're importing states. And then when we're setting like a P entity editor name, name, name map. Import state data. When we go into here, so this is, yeah, this is the point where I'm supposed to import the persistent state data. Mm-hmm, come on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're in here, great. We've gotta go down to wherever this is used, which is about here. We have the entity, or at least we have the... Interesting. The M group translator is nothing. So it does consider the entity to be O1 rather than E01. That's not great. That's not great at all. In fact, this should have a group translator if this is the persistent one. If I roll back to here, Somewhere in here, dependency. Information. Is there any dependency importers? Okay. What I need is the translator. It's the translator that matters most here. So I get to these dependencies. Okay, going to the importer, where is the translator? It's a group translator. It's part of the, this somewhere, I presume. From the faux YAML importer, okay. Set group translator, okay. 
Let's have a look at this. Where do I call this? Set group translator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Set a group data. This is for the test. Okay, source import state. For each of the dependency importers, I do this. Okay. So I'm translating source group value 14 to 0. What is 14? That'll be E. So that's the persistent. Yeah, that's OK. That's all fine and dandy. Then we get down to here somewhere. So when we get into here, we go into the importer to run the import state data. Great, we're in here. So inside of here, this is group zero. Okay. Then we get down to yeah that. Entity three. would be correct. Let me get down to here. This persistent importer Okay, I need to fix up how I'm dealing with this. This is not, this is obviously not great. So let's say I have several indices here. I have state, I have resources, external data. What I kind of need is, a, is another one. So I need like a the data B. So basically today is going to be like fixing up uh, importing data, presumably, and then possibly exporting it. Looks like. So we got a new dependencies. YAML. We, okay, close that up. What's this file look like? We have the data A, group zero. Why not? Same as this. Then we include state index data dot yaml. We're going to have let's say one. No, it starts at one, we set it to two. nothing here uh, resource index data dot yaml there's nothing here for this one we have the state for one thing will set to uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. We're going to call it, let's say, render, B, render mesh B. 
it'll be basically the same as this but it's going to be index f1 render mesh b position this but it'll be moved up by let's say three otherwise we have index id of that index ID. Ooh, yeah okay so this is going to be this is going to require a bit of finagling what is the other part of <clears throat> I'm importing state on the importer and running YAML read ID required. I go into here. Go deeper. There'll be a group value. Which I'll set to zero. So it'll be, hold on. Group ID. Essentially the same thing, but it's in a another group but it uses group zeros resources from the data A, and then this is brought into this as well. So you have that, we'll have dash name, the data B. ID B reset to one. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. Let's see how this works. First of all, we got that, great. We don't have it. It's just not fair at all. That's terrible. And to do this, Render Mesh B is supposed to be somewhere around here. It's all still zero stuff. Okay. So that came in fine. It not rendering is probably due to, if I go to render call, yeah, okay. Where is render mesh ID? I need to basically run this twice. that set the application will need this to exist even if temporarily that's probably what just what's happening is I need that and then to find all locations of this so here and here Okay, so of course, in accordance with everything being upside down, it's th plus three is down there. Of course, I presume if I was to run it in the headset, VR headset, it'll probably be the right th going the right way. 
I've got something wrong with the rent camera setup or some something somehow like that. Not sure precisely what. Um, okay, so that's correct. It's bringing it in correctly. If I check what the value is. So that'd be like one and then that'll be or three and then that'll be some large number. That's correct. Correct getting the correct things. What if okay. Choose a different resource. Okay, actually that's another thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's have a third one. Paste that. Uh, it's not this one. It'll be a start. Uh, it'll be number two. Mesh B two. That's great. Very imaginative. Render mesh B two. Index two. But it's going to use a different mesh. The other mesh. So it's fourteen. So thirteen. And it'll be at position six. So another three down. Don't have to recompile, just rerun it. The new data doesn't show up because, right, new application. down there it'll have that but it'll like sorry what happened to the other one what what happened b and b2 okay b and b2 b to b2 All right. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, right. State index starts at three. It should be that one, and then there should be that one. But it's only picking up this other one. Oh. My bad. Have a little bit more entropy there. So that just kind of leaves the question of, yeah, I need a okay. So I got a bit more entropy now. I can maybe reason a little bit better about what's going on with 
that. So I do this, I read this. Okay, I want to go into this. I'm doing the persistent importer, great. Then I go into here. Okay, then I'm going into reading the optional ID. Yeah, great. Group value is persistent. This is on, where am I? Required to optional and here group value is that it's 14 group becomes I may want to formalize this a little bit more. So I'll keep going. Do that. Run view, entity list, camera. Okay. Okay. So that's the basics of that. Still running at about 30 to 40, point 0.3 to point 0.4 milliseconds a frame. That's great. So let's get what I got here first. Um, data. Integrity, I guess, data integrity, whatever. So we have to bring up sets, we're gonna update this. a few more inherited original data set us up to here changes not really particularly interested in that but I am on this Okay, 
of that. Now, this... I should probably always create a translator, regardless of... Because... Mm -hmm. uh, is there like an invalid? I can maybe use the temporary group as an invalid import or translation target. That would make sense. Because you're not supposed to actually be able to import any of these temporary. Temporary are specifically local only temporary kind of things. Things that really aren't even meant to be synchronized. Things like, I don't know, local UI elements and stuff. Or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want from me? Something that works? Unlikely. Temporary group. that if no translation was found. Alright, so what I want to do then is ID go to this if pro yaml exception we're going to have a thing that's going to be throwing an exception that says
throw that. Which will then throw it back to this. Which will then be thrown back out to this. Which is going to... Throws it back to this. Okay. So if I do this, this should uh, error out. Okay. Okay, there we go. Error. Failed to parse entity state data group ID was given group value of that for which no translation exists. Perfect. Because what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to give a group translator to this importer, which I did not. So set. I mean, I'm setting a translator some at some point. Set translator. Nope, didn't quite get that. Search and create importer. Okay. Create the importer. Okay. No. YAML importer. Help me. Set group translator, that's what I'm looking for. This is where I do it, right here. For each of the dependency ones. No, oh, okay. The next one should have two. Fourteen to. So the persistent is going to the destination group one. And this is being set to zero, correct? Destination dependencies. So if I want to do this. I just create a translator, which just does the exact same thing. Translator for persistent. Level group. We do destination dependencies, which is what? Dependencies, and we can place that on the back. Mm -hmm. Equals full ID persistent group value. Let me say destination dependencies like that. That should give us that. And let me say, hey, you know, persistent. Importer, set group translator. This. Yes. 
Okay, uh, hold on. Very interestingly, we get down to this. We have a new translator, which is right, 14 goes of that. 384. Mm, I'm presuming that's basically the same as that. That we'll find out soon enough. But persistent importer at the moment. Okay, give me this, please. It's nothing. What? Okay. Okay. So at what point did I actually set it in the first place? Unless... Mm, set persistent importer. Does this do something? Does this create... No. Okay. When do I create this? I, do, I create it here. Search and create importer. Uh huh. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, well, importer, what's it called? M group translator. I mean, you're right, there is no member named that, but still. Can I get the translator? No. Of course it's not null pointer. It's never null pointer because it's a local <laughs> object. It's local to the object. It's not a pointer. Of course it's... Oh, man. Yeah, okay. That's why. All right. Translator and stuff. We've got that. We've got the import state. Do this, these three. Added, um, added error output for.
when The importing state, the persistent importer. I didn't just put that up, put that up. Ah, uh, crap. Build make test. You presume? Yeah. I really should actually start adding some documentation on a lot of these assumptions I keep making for everything. But what part of this is failing? Hmm? Libs for ECS test test. So we got this on line eighty one invalid source returns. Not phone valid ID. I can't do that because there is a there is a zero group. You can't do that. Um, It's dead. Rebase. All right, so that's one thing. I'll be fill some water and I'll be back to do a little bit more to do with the application and kind of rendering multiple things. Right, because I don't want to do this, obviously. This is a Terrible idea. BRB. Okay. So, <clears throat> rendering multiple of these things. My current idea is that I can probably just iterate through whatever's in... Uh, like, I don't even have to be here. I can do it out here, but I can find... Was it render state, effectively, and just iterate through that for the moment. Now, if I put it out here or inside, I'm not entirely sure. It's a component pool based thing, yeah. Okay. 
Do I want to put it here, though? Mm. And then I just pass the render state in. Now, I still need the entity so I can grab the other things, right? I'd still need to be able to find the vertex descriptor. And the position pool, if it exists. So I just return false. Then up here, yeah, okay, I need to split this up. Open file and I need to split it to the right. No, split to the right. Close, 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 close. Go down to here. What we're going to do we're going to find this okay great put the star on the right side fantastic then we want to iterate through and passing in at the same time, each of them, right? Uh, how do I iter iterate through the dang thing? Component pool. Just grab this. Nope, 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 nope. Get out of here. I want to. Yeah, for data pool, how do I iterate? Begin and end. C begin and C end. And this is to that type. Okay. Um, ID iterator equals that. Auto iterator equals p under table c begin on one Auto const and iterator id iterator yeah C end Changes up a little bit for that ID iterator not equal and ID iterator. iterator. Data iterator. Okay, we can do this just about where we say, hey, you know, it's star of that. And we'll just kind of give that as a raw pointer. We go to the call. Kind of and that down to this. We'll have render state star p render state const yeah okay and then we can uh 
basically skip all this. do the same thing down here. So the P camera descriptor instead. With that we have max supported samples here. We have that and that. Not that render pass though, we have this one. Okay, and let's just eliminate one of them right now. Mm, this one will just eliminate uh, the box one. It's loaded anyways. That's not good. Um. Okay, new plan. We get rid of that one. Okay, works fine. So, let's just kind of fix that up. Uh, we get rid of these, all three of these. Um, that goes away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Placed hard coded. See, that's another thing I want to check then is if I was to eliminate the position on let's say this one would it still and try to render it should just fail out well I mean it's not gonna actually like break but it won't render it which is correct put that back in rerun it's back okay we're getting there. Things are slowly coming together. Less and less hard coded, more and more dynamic. I wanted to say something along the lines of it's a very basic implementation. It's very slow since it's re since it's pulling data individually every time for the moment. But you know that's something that works out as things progress, things get refined. So we got that. That's great. Um, This is very interesting. 
I don't have any new items here to be re to be exported somehow. I'm going to revisit exporting, obviously. But do I want to do it right now? Mm. Maybe. Maybe. Or do I want to, hmm, either I focus on trying to properly export items, or I fix, check out importing items. Because the idea, one of the ideas is being able to, let's say, overwrite uh, states, certain sta uh, objects state. So if I was to have, let's say, um, 0x one I think underscore zero x one two three four five six seven uh, one and, uh, I mean that doesn't really matter what matters is this part the idea being okay I'm slightly overwriting this and I like want to change the position And that's going to be something that you can do. So you can have, you know, that you can have the basic original data and then you can overwrite portions of it uh, for like, let's say, mods down the line or even or even the save. Which would make sense. You have an NPC. It starts at location whatever on the initial import from whatever base game uh, simulation data you get it from. And then, of course, like in the save, he's, you know, the NPC has moved somewhere. The object has moved somewhere. That's the data that gets recorded and saved is the fact that position changed. Not necessarily, uh, you know, changes, things that didn't change. Things that didn't change probably be like, you know, the the editor name or like the render state, like the, the vertex descriptor and materials it uses. That may be still be the same. It could also be different. And in which case, it'll be overwritten. Anyways, that's what this is about. So group ID of one. And if I was to change this to negative three, so it's actually put above, this probably doesn't work at all yet. No, but that's something that needs to, even if it doesn't yet. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> okay. Okay. So the, I, I guess the first part would be to try to figure out this overload uh, system. So, what happens when I'm importing something? Importing state, which is still in here, which is not great, but we go inside the, let's say the, this, we import state data. How does this work precisely? Hmm? Here, we go through, we have, this we get to here let's say or no we don't quite want to do that oh well, we could doesn't really matter we'll hit it soon enough so two one and we got this one okay we're here
So first of all, how do I do I get the entity correct? I might. I'm not sure if that's correct. Uh, let me do x one. Is it one? I'm overwriting one. Yeah. One two three four five six one. Is four fifty seven two six yeah okay so that's right we're here we're doing this okay we find this we're going through we're going to add this. are looking to do to do an insert that I don't think it's going to work because I already have a number of items that are to be inserted I don't have any store they're all to insert and what's going to happen is that the first one is going to overwrite the second one right So I kind of have it I I kind of have it there already to overwrite. I'm just not Okay, how can I get around this? I can either I can perhaps run maintenance in the meantime but if I'm adding if I'm doing a pool insert if I run an insert again that's not going to work either at all okay when I'm running maintenance actually I am choosing the first one instead of the last one. That's what's happening, right? Is it under even ECS or is it like it's under FO? Data pool implementation. Maintenance will be the large function right about here. Okay. Insertions. How do I do unique? Sta okay, standard unique. So standard unique is what? It saves the first, right? Eliminates all except the first element from every consecutive group. Okay. A unique last function would kind of, I mean, it's not a permanent solution, but it would resolve this for the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, hold on. All right. Can I, okay, insert begin and to insert end. This is a multi-object. That's the predicate I use currently. Okay. But let's have like a... It's a template. It's... What exactly is standard unique? It's forward. Okay, forward iterator. Okay. Iterator, it's 
const expression since 20, since C++ 20, okay. For iterator. Last. And then we need a binary pr predicate. Okay. Okay, let's do one without the binary predicate first. Uh, okay, what do we want? If, okay. If that, then we just return right away. Results. I need to compare it first. Result is the same as first. That means it's something we can keep moving. So we need to start result equals standard move of the first. Result doesn't move. First, uh, the result is moved forward. And if statement. Basically, have the same thing, but we have the binary predicate. Predicate. I call it P. Okay. If P of this and that that's for that's doing the iterator points. That's fine. Okay, and then I want to do unique last. So it should move that th the middle one up to above it. Yes. Okay. That's good. Uh, let's put this these into another file. Al algorithm, uh, basically, because what this is from standard unique is from algorithm, so we need like an algorithm. alternate here. 
Put that, put that in. HPP. Define that, and with that, we move that. These are templates, so we just put them right here. Uh, standard move comes from where? Standard move is part of utility. Put this under our namespace. Foe. Since it's basically like a namespace standard. And it's, yeah, okay. Then we do that. Up at the top, we include Have a little bit of uh, to group it. Oops. And uh, defined range. Forward, okay. Um, and first, This would be to the end of the array, right? So I need, so it'd be the other way around, isn't it? So it's, we wanna do, oh no, no, yeah. This is a new end to the end. That's the yeah, items we're removing. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Wait. Yeah, keeping keeping the last item. So it's not removing duplicates, it's removes side by side item, same elements. Even the last from any of those.
together in a section. That's, yeah. First is last, that result equals first, first, last, result first, otherwise move first. Yeah, because we're overriding the result, which is the beginning of the range, with the first item, which is equal. If not, then we move forward. Yeah. And this is the same thing, but this is the predicate version. That's the non-predicate version. Okay. I guess I should probably test this. What are we do how am I doing for time? Twenty minutes. Mm. Okay, I'll do the test for this offline because it's super boring stuff, and then I'll return for the last thing I was going to do, which was okay. This is overwrite the export, the data export, fixing that up, verifying it works. Okay, so with that done and out of the way. That just leaves kind of the last thing I wanted to do for tonight, which was exporting of data. Now, I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be the persistent group, but for whatever reason, it's catching everything in the zero group. Not, It's only supposed to be grabbing... effectively what's in a persistent group which should be like just camera i think and maybe this oh they won't catch this yet because I, I don't have comparisons yet so first of all let's entities and resources let's just delete this and rerun it once and see what we're going through to figure it out Session end, so it'll be around here. Up, 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 up. Here it is. Okay, so we got this. I know this is import initialization. Here we go. Deinitialization. Export YAML. 
P simulation, okay. What's going on? Let's go inside. Right, this is the thing I had to put in a separate uh, place for the exception handling. We got a YAML exporter. We export YAML here. First of all, we check if it exists. Create a subdirectory. Great. So we export dependencies, which first should give us open this. Okay, close this up, open this up. We got dependencies, those two. Wonderful. Index data for resources. Should be, yeah, there's nothing. I presume entity index data, which should be two with no recyclables. No. Okay, so that's a problem right there. Persistent state index should have a free ID of two. So let's start there. P sim state, great. Yeah, yeah. We're here. We got P data, which has an X free ID of one. Do I just not import this correctly? That's probably a good thing to check. Importer. Resource definitions, import state data. Maybe not. Okay, we're supposed to do it right here. This is where we import persistent index data, right here. So we go inside, great. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Okay, finally we're inside. We're here, we open the path. Next free ID, it's one. Group ID is that, which would be correct. No recycled. Okay, we go inside. Next index is one. What file am I reading again? So we got this the persistent, great. And we have the index file path resource in. Okay, yes, that's true. I'm, I'm reading the wrong one right now. Great, thank you. Uh, go to implementations. There should be another one in here somewhere. Importer index data, great.
go to here, then we get into here. State index data YAML. Persistent, great, go inside. We open the file, go inside to read. Next index of two, great. So we go down to here, index generator, we import state. So if we check index generator right now, next three is two, recycle is nothing, great. That'd be correct. And then when we're going through this, and we're here, we're exporting the, ent the, the entity index data right here. Persistent entity indices have a, have a value of two. Yes, that's correct. But I'm providing the wrong one. Okay. Great. So that should take me down the resources. Entity index data should be correct now. Yes. Okay, exporting of resources should be exporting absolutely nothing. And instead of it exported basically everything. So What is going on? Mm -hmm. So we got the export state, there's Um, yeah, okay. Is it because I'm constantly trying to just export the zero group, perhaps? ID persistent group. If that's the case, then yeah, okay, that makes a lot of sense of what it's exporting. Okay. Okay. I guess it was just a mistake of me checking the wrong thing. Just a couple of minor issues, which I guess I should be happy about. All right. I'll put this up and call it a night there. All right. Cheers.